Alright guys, welcome back to another video. We have finally got the major update, at least the first half of it, in CS2. If you load up your CS2, you'll get a little pop-up about the Copenhagen Major, and then on the left-hand side, you can now see the Copenhagen Major Hub and items, which we'll go through a little bit in a second and do pick because that's the main purpose of this video. But there is also now a way that you can access some of the stickers to see what they might look like. And recently we started opening the case at the start of the video just to see what we get. We'll see how well that actually goes down the line because this time it's going to be an insomnia. This video is sponsored by CSGO Lock, one of the fastest growing Counter-Strike sites with a lot of games to play, a bunch of deposit methods and instant withdrawals with a store full of skins and crypto withdrawals coming in the future. You can claim three free cases by using my code FOZ or clicking the link in the description. You can play case battles against real players or bots with the potential to win cool skins or you can just straight up open some cases. They also have other cool games and CSGO Lock is loaded with bonuses and rewards like unlocking daily cases for free thanks to your level and the leaderboard with lots of prizes. Make sure to use my code FOZ or the link in the description to claim your three cases and let's get back to the video. So before we dive into pickings, I want to show some of the stickers that are in the game. And you can kind of see them there, like on this um, little pop-up of the major hub and items, you can see the Navi Gold, the Thea's Hollow and the Nine Pandas Hollow. Now to help with consistency, I'm just going to show the four variants of one team logo. I'll go for Navi's because it's the first I have access to. It's worth noting these aren't released yet, so these aren't necessarily the final version. But they've been leaked and you can access them through like a word doc uh, and put them in so this is what the paper looks like no border which i'm a little upset about because we've had like three borderless in the last two or two three years it would have been cool to have a nice border the most notable thing is and i think a few people have touched on it on social media already they've moved the like logo from being on like the bottom corner with a bit of flair to being very clean the way the old cattle 14 text used to be so if, you, if you're a fan of the cattle 14s and you're a fan of borderless this could work well Unfortunately, we don't see the return to foils, and we are instead getting glitters. Um, as you go through the glitters when they come out, the likes of the Navi one, I actually think looks pretty good, but a lot of them don't look that good. The hollows right now are the ones that we're a little bit uncertain on. So this one you can see, uh, there's basically little circles that have the hollow effect in the middle, um, but other ones have like a Norse pattern in it, which makes sense with it being in Copenhagen and Denmark. So I think hollows right now are probably the most unfinished that we have access to. And then the gold, for example, you can see the sort of markings that I mean here. There's little markings in the gold, bottom left and top right here. This should really realistically be the markings you also see in the hollow, I think. So uh, that's how the, I mean, this is how the stickers look. I, I do think these are possibly going to be the better borderless out of what we have. It'll be interesting to see the final release versions of FX compared to the likes of Stockholm. And if you, I'll get Donk's signature just so you can see how they look. So this is Donk's glitter, which I mean, if you put in a white sticker onto a darker skin, this will work well. And then their hollow, I hope this gets a bit of an update because I think the actual logo itself isn't really getting much hollow effect and it's just the signature and the lighting, uh, the outline, but maybe that's what they want to do. But that's the sticker. So we've kind of got like, I still think this is only half of the update. I have been preaching about an Inferno collection update and an Overpass collection update. We'll see if that comes to fruition or not. Right now, if they don't give us a new collection update, that means that the CS2 updated versions of Inferno and Overpass will get drops that have the old CSGO map like collection logo on them, which I think would just be a bit stupid, but we'll see what Valve do. Let's actually look at the Pick'ems now, because this has changed. Now, I've bought my pass already, so I can't go and show you guys like the prices for the pass. What I will say is, don't buy the one that comes with the extra tokens. I have bought that for the purpose of content, but realistically, go for the cheaper one that just gets you the pass. And um, you'll have team graffitis as usual. You can go in here and pick it. I've gone for Navi, when want Alexi B to win his first major. And the system is, the layout's a bit different and the system has changed. So you get access to opening stage now. And you can see here, uh, you don't have to do every round. These question marks don't actually matter. All these don't matter. Don't worry about that. But now, rather than before, where you had to do a single 3-0 pick and a single 0-3 pick, you now have to do two of each. And the advancement stage is no longer a general advancement. It's now specifically for the teams that finish three and one and three and two. And I'm gonna show you the one from Paris just to give you a bit of example, because this is a key thing that people are missing so far. Now, if we can ignore the fact I put NIP three and O during Paris, because I was incredibly delusional, the old system used to be a case of you had to pick a team that would advance undefeated three and O, and pick a team that would be eliminated without winning O and three. And then the remaining seven teams that were going to advance were just any seven teams that you wanted that you thought would advance. The strategy here was that even if Fias and G2 were favourites, for example, 
you would never put them 3-0 and because there's a chance they get upset and lose one series. And even if they were to go 3-0, and if you had them in this bottom slot, you'd still get the point for that. But that's changing because I think Valve realized that that was probably the meta of picks that people were catching on to. So when I first looked at it, I immediately was thinking, okay, let's throw like Cloud9, Enz, Furia, Heroic and stuff into this advanced bracket because they should be the teams that regardless of record do get advanced. But instead, we now have to pick, you actually have to pick the teams you think are going to go 3-0. For example, if I put Cloud9 in here and they advance 3-0, in the past, I would have got the point for it. I would have counted towards and you need to get 5 out of the 10 correct for this. This time, because I love got their record incorrect i would actually feel it so I've, I've done a bit of a bracket generator which i'll show in a minute but i am going to put cloud nine and i'm going to put internal fire as my um three and O picks and then for my O and three picks i'm going to put lin vision and i'm going to put amcal now i was tied between amcal and koi um kite maybe put some sense into me when we discussed it on discord i've switched i'm gonna have a bit of faith in the koi guys um so i'm gonna put amcal as the O and three now, when it comes to the other six teams that I think will advance um, getting through, I think Ince makes a lot of sense. Uh, a lot of experienced players there. They've done it before. They know what they're doing. I think they'll survive the bracket. Um, Furia are another one. I do think Furia might end up 2-2 two and two with a bit of an iffy game. But we'll see. Um, another one I think is going to make it through will be Heroic. Uh, I also think Apex will make it through. And then you're left with these final four teams, or the final two slots. And you've got, like, seven teams to pick from. Um... I have done a bracket generator, which I'll show at the minute, which might help justify some of my picks here. I'm actually going to put the Mongols through on a 3-1 and one or a 3-2. I think they're going to get through. And then I believe I put my last pick as Saw. And I'm going to double check this. So I'm just double checking it. And I'm making this video to help you guys with, with the pickings process and everything. So if you want to do this, you can copy mine. Um, I think Internal Fire and Cloud9, because you have to pick people that you think will go 3-0. and I think at least one of them should definitely do it. Uh, I think Lin Vision are quite popular as the 0 and 3 pick. The other thing to mention though is I think this is going to be the hardest stage of pickings we've had in quite a while because the system change makes it a lot less likely to just flick through on seven picks like you could do before. And you have to an MR12 here, so it's and it's best of ones. If it's not an elimination match or a like um, qualification match, they're all best of one on MR12, so it can very quickly cause upsets. So, yeah, I then had I had those guys going through, and then my 3-1 and one and 3-2, and two, I've had Heroic, I've had Enz, I've had Mongols, Furia, Apex, and Saw, which means the likes of Ecstatic, Koi, Legacy, and everything are missing out. Now, I'm going to lock this in, and then I'm going to show you guys a bracket generator to sort of justify why I've done it. And I think you guys should use this bracket generator as well for doing your own picks, because on paper, you may turn around and say, oh, man, like, I don't know, Cold Zero and Legacy are definitely going to get through, or... Like, this team should definitely be going 3-0, and but it depends how the bracket falls. So, this is Majors.im. Uh, I'll move it here so you can actually see. So, this system, you can fully change it to who you think is going to win games. Um, now, I'll go through, basically, round one. Uh, and as I've mentioned, MR12 can already throw this off. There is a world where we get six upsets in the opening round because MR12 best of one. But... Cloud9 over Static, I think if you're being logical, it's a fair pick. Eternal Fire Mongols, I think is actually going to be a really cool scheme because I have faith in Mongols going through. But Eternal Fire's form has been looking good, so sort of backing them there. I think Ince with the Glaive experience is going to be Imperial. Apex will beat Pain. Heroic over Linvision, like I say, Linvision on my own three. You can see the final results here, but I'm just going to sort of walk through through the bracket with you guys. Um, Nine Pandas over Amcal, I think that'll be super close, but again, I think that Nine Pandas team do it. Saw and Koi is another insanely cool series. Um, they had a 2-1 in the RMR recently, um, but I think Saw will edge out. And then I think Furia and that Brazilian battle should be able to beat Legacy. Now, if you focus on the run to 3-0 first, you can see where this can get a little bit tricky, because these are best of one matches. Cloud9 against Furia should be a close game. Kind of banking that Furia will bottle it like they have been doing recently. Eternal Fire saw both teams in good form. As I say, I'm leaning into the Eternal Fire sort of form and just blitzing through at least the opening stage. Ince over nine pandas should be a comfortable win for Ince. Best of ones can really throw the mix run, as we've been saying. And then Apex against Heroic will actually be really interesting because you've got kicks in the old Apex IGL on Heroic. This might go either way, but I'm leaning with uh, Heroic getting the win here. And then that sets up these round three matches where I think Cloud9 should be able to comfortably beat comfortably beat Heroic over a best of three series. And as much as I'm trusting Glaive in the Ents, guys, this is where I'm committing on the internal fire pick. Maybe it should be Ents. You guys can make your own judgment there. But that's how I've got to the stage of Cloud9 and internal fire being 3-0.
if we focus on the 03 picks then and how this plays out, Aesthetic and Legacy is really going to be a toss-up, but I have neither of these teams going 0 3. So it doesn't matter too much. I think Mongols will have enough firepower and, and come in and upset Koi. Imperial should be beating Amcal. And then I think P and Gaming should also be beating Lin Vision. I think they're two obvious picks people will be going for. That then sets up the full win 2 matches where it's Legacy and Lin Vision. I don't think Cole Zero is going 0-3 at the Major. Lin Vision get eliminated. And then Koi and Amcal is the one where I mentioned before. I initially had Koi going out. But kind of uh, talk some sense into me. So I'm going to go with Amcal getting eliminated. So that's how I've come to those 3-0 and 0-3 picks, and then you can see the middle bracket just gets a little bit messy, and this is why I think it's actually going to be quite difficult to get Diamond Coin this time, because, like I said previously, I would have previously had Cloud9 and Internal Fire just in general advancements. Like, if I go back to the other tab, if we were doing this format with the teams we have here, the bottom row, you would basically be putting Cloud9, Eternal Fire, Heroic, Mongols, Ince, Furia, and Apex, for example, and the out of those seven teams, you could almost guarantee five of them are going to go through. And then you take a chance on your 3-0, maybe being like, I don't know, Saul, for example. And then your 0-3, you commit on like Lin Vision still. Um, and that would have been a fairly easy opening stage prediction, I would say. But now that we have to actually get the predictions perfect, I think it's going to be a little bit more tricky. Now, if you're wondering why you want to do the pick or why you should be doing the pick basically, the more you progress and the further you get, the more souvenir packages you get which can be bought normally for 239 so whether you want to get them yourselves and open them or you want to get them and sell them to try and profit from doing it whilst then also getting a bronze silver gold or diamond coin that is basically what we're doing so uh, we're still waiting for the stickers to be released into the game fully um i think that should come tonight if we got everything last night kind of hoping tonight we'll get this update for it and then that means everything's in the game radio two days ahead of the major um, we're still waiting to find out if we get updated overpass and inferno collections which i do think we should be getting but again valve might screw me over on that prediction uh, and this is what i've ended with so if you guys want to copy me uh, feel free uh no guarantees that this is going to progress into a silver coin but i am overall kind of hopeful that i should be able to get five of the ten picks here and then we can try that run for the diamond coin. Uh, if you want to discuss like the, the major in general, whether that's just the games going on or the pick games, I do suggest joining the Discord. It'll be linked down below. We've got a dedicated esports section there, and I want to try and get that as active as possible. We love the skins, and I love skins too, but we've got to show some appreciation to these big events and the best players in the game that we love. So I'm going to stop waffling. That's my pick games. Good luck. Let me know who you think are going to go 3-0 and and who you think is going to go 0-3. Have I got it horribly wrong? Are you guys cooking? Just let me know. I said that one, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Good.